This video is going to show you how to assemble a universal matrix band and retainer. Starting out with the basic setup with the mirror, explorer, and cotton pliers. I also need a burnisher. I have my matrix bands as well as a universal or Toffelmeyer retainer. I have my prepared teeth here. For the demonstration, we'll use tooth number 19. And I also have some wood wedges. Before we start, we need to become familiar with the anatomy of the retainer and the band. The retainer here has several different components. We have an outer knob, which controls the spindle. We have an inner knob, which will control the vice box moving up and down this rail here, which will in turn change the size of the band loop. The spindle itself is this threaded portion. It has a pointed tip on it. It helps secure the band into the box. The square here with the diagonal slot is your vice box. And then at the very end, you have guide slots. The guide slots, we would stick the loop of the universal matrix band either to the right or to the left. And this will depend on which quadrant we are working in. If you take a look at your outer knob, I'm gonna loosen it all the way. You notice that the spindle becomes separated from the box. We can't work with it loose like this, but just be aware it does come apart. So I'm going to insert the spindle into the vice box slightly, but not all the way through. I need to leave the slot open to receive the ends of the band. If I put the spindle all the way through, it would prevent the band from being seated into the box here. The inner knob, if you watch this turning, see how the box is sliding up on the rail. If I turn it the opposite way, it will slide down. The diagonal slot here, when you're looking at the retainer from this side, this corresponds to the gingival side. So when you're working on maxillary teeth, this assembly faces up. When you're working on mandibular teeth, this assembly would be facing downward for the mandibular teeth. When you're assembling it though, always look at it so that you can see that diagonal slot. For the bands, we have two bands here, a narrow one with rounded edges or ends. This band is used on primary dentition because it's smaller and those teeth are smaller than the permanent teeth. The other band, a universal band here, is going to be used on most typical class two restorations. There is a special band if you have a very deep restoration. Notice it is V-shaped or smile-shaped. I tell my students it looks like a smile. The top part of the V or the top part of the smile will correspond to the gingival side of the teeth. The bottom of the V or the bottom of the smile will correspond to the occlusal side of the teeth. How these bands work is you take the tail ends and you hold them together. When you do that, you create this loop. If you take a look at the loop carefully, you'll notice the top part here, the gingival part, is shorter than the occlusal side here. The occlusal side sticks out maybe a millimeter or so further than the gingival side. When you think about tooth anatomy, your teeth are not shaped like perfect squares. They taper down at the cervix, the neck of the tooth. So these bands will fit the anatomy of your teeth. So I flipped it, this here is the gingival loop 
the smaller loop, and this here is the occlusal loop, the larger circle. I'm going to start by burnishing the band. Burnishing the band will help contour it. It will create a slight bend in the band. We don't want to burnish too much. You just want a slight band, a slight bend to your band. And you'll see it become shiny where you burnish it. You only really have to burnish that middle section. Bring the tail ends together. So start with a smile. Bring the tails together. Gingival side is on top. You always want to assemble it by looking at the gingival side. Always hold your retainer with the gingival side facing you. So gingival loop faces you, gingival retainer side faces you. We're going to insert the tail into the vise box. And right now I'm just going to let the loop stick out the top here. I'll keep my thumb over the vise box to prevent the tails from popping back up. And we have to decide which side will the loop come out. If you bring the loop out the left guide slot, this would work for upper left teeth and lower right teeth. Since I'm working on tooth 19 today, I need to bring this loop, just bring it up and over and down into the right guide slot. So this setup will work for upper right and lower left. So I have the loop coming out the correct guide slot. I now need to secure the band in place so it doesn't pop out. So I need to tighten the spindle. Tighten the spindle as tightly as you can. And you'll notice the spindle pinches through the box and you'll see a little indentation here. That's just the spindle pinching the band securely. Now I'm going to make my loop a little more circular. Right now it's kind of teardrop shaped. It could be difficult or challenging to fit this around a molar. So to do that, take one of your round instruments, doesn't matter which one, stick it through the loop. And if you've ever curled ribbon for gifts, it's something very similar. Press your thumb against the flat part of the band and pull the instrument against your finger. You do want to be careful when you do this. The edges of the band are very sharp, so that's why you want to be careful to only press on the flat part, not the edges. So by doing that, I have a more circular shaped band. It'll be a little easier to place it over a molar tooth. So again, I'm still looking at that diagonal slot and the smaller circle. This is the gingival side. Since this is tooth number 19, we're on the mandible, so this assembly will be flipped over like so. It will go on the tooth. Like this. So here we have a close-up of the tooth that we're going to be working on. Number 19 has an MO preparation. I'm going to turn this over so the gingival side of the band and retainer face the gingiva. I like to put my finger on the lingual side to kind of press the band into a more circular shape and wiggle it down into position. And now I need to tighten the band. Right now it's very loose and would easily pop off during the filling portion. In order to tighten the band, I need to make the loop smaller. I'm going to turn my inner knob. 
So the inner knob, let me back this up a little bit. The inner knob will change the size of the loop. Always keep your finger on top of the tooth so that the band does not slip off. I'm going to tighten, and as I'm tightening, you'll see the vice box slide down the rail. It's pulling the band down, so it will create a smaller, tighter loop. Every couple of turns of the inner knob, I always like to check my outer knob to make sure it did not loosen up. So every couple of turns of the inner knob, I just double check my outer knob. Always keep your finger over the tooth just so that it doesn't pop up as you're tightening. So now the retainer is quite snug and the band around the tooth is nice and tight. The next step is to place your wedge. These wedges are made out of wood, but they could also be made out of plastic. They could be circular, they could be triangular in shape. These particular wedges are triangular in shape. When you think about your interproximal space, the space between teeth, that is triangular the base of the triangle will go against the gingiva. These wedges also have a slight curve to them. We want that curve to travel away from the gingiva. So I'm going to position my wedge almost in a downward direction to start with. To get it started. Once it's in the space, it's not in all the way, but it's in enough that I can go in with my finger and press it in more securely. And if that hurts your finger, you end up with an indentation like that. Use your cotton pliers, the end here, and just securely press the end, and you can watch the tip come out through the buckle side. So the tip will poke through and appear on the buckle side. Now that the band and the wedge are in place, I can do the final step before filling, which is burnishing the band against the neighboring tooth. So this wedge helps prevent overhang. It keeps the band snug against the tooth and will prevent the filling from overhanging. So it maintains that interproximal shape, that space that we need. The burnishing of the band, I'm going to press and rub the band against the adjacent tooth, the neighboring tooth. This will help create a nice tight contact. We want a tight contact so that when the patient flosses, they get that little snap from the contact. And the contact, a good contact, will help prevent food from impaction, from impacting between the teeth and help keep the space cleaner. So now this tooth is ready to be filled. Once the filling is complete, so we're gonna pretend there's an amalgam filling in this tooth. To remove the band, it's a specific sequence. So we'd have to imagine the filling is in the tooth right now. We need to remove the retainer first. So we wanna leave the band behind. to remove the band. Always keep your finger over the, the occlusal portion when you remove this. We want to remove the retainer first. Loosen the outer knob. This 
spindle no longer pinches the band, and then just slide the retainer off. Then we want to take the wedge out. This can be challenging because it's not only in there tightly to begin with, but now there's a filling in place to hold it in snug. So we pull the wedge out. And the last step is to carefully remove the band. So you're going to have a filling in place. It's very important to not break that filling as you pull the band out. So a lot of times you might slide the band. And this of course came out very easily because there is no filling. But you might wanna slide the band out and just do so very carefully. So that is how you place and remove a universal matrix band.